me down there this week. Uh, I wasn't prepared for them, but that's all right. They didn't tell me what day they were coming. They said they'd be here this week and kept waiting on them, and sure enough, they showed up. Uh, and Diane was studying the Bible last night, or the night before, and she asked me a question, uh, how do you glorify God? She just started reading a Bible study, and she's trying to learn about his word, so I thought, well, that'd be a good sermon. I'll just, uh, just we'll just do that. We'll, we'll start in, uh, the Bible's full of how we glorify God. You know, when I first started the church, uh, I didn't really understand how I could glorify God or how I could be a blessing to God or could I bless God in any way. I mean, young people don't understand that. Exodus uh, 15, 2 says, The Lord is my strength and song. Got a crease on my page here. And song unto the and song unto the Lord. Oh, the Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord, is, uh, you know, when we understand that the Lord is our strength and salvation, then we can glorify him with that. We praise him and we worship him. Uh we have to know that, though, before we can do it. And there's just one way we can know that is, is to start serving him. In Second Samuel uh, 22. Oh, boy. Well, I'm having a hard time looking... This is a song David wrote. I think it's the last song he wrote for the Lord. Second Samuel 22, 2 and 3. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and horn, my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. We have to know that, and we have to uh, know that He's He's our Savior. He's our He's our He's our Lord. We can praise Him and love Him and worship Him. When we sing a Camellia's songs, we're praising God, and that brings glory to Him through us and through we're giving glory to him through Jesus Christ. We can't do that by ourselves. We have to praise and worship God, and uh, he becomes our God. He becomes our Savior. He becomes an object of our worship. We have to give our hearts to him and worship him. In the same uh, chapter, let's go to... Uh, Verse 33. <clears throat> I'll, I'll back up 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord, and who is our rock save our God? God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me up on high places. That kind of faith is the kind of faith that David had. This is his last, his last uh, song that he wrote before he died. And in verse 47 in the same book, uh, start at 45. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me as soon as they 
fear, they shall be obedient unto me. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God the, of the rock of my salvation. It is God that avengeth me, that bringeth down the people under me. He doesn't get any glory or or blessings from us if we if we're not living for him it's impossible for us to bring glory to God unless we turn our lives over to him and live for him and and praise him and honor him Psalms 22:23 This psalm was written about Christ, a lot of it dying on the cross. Verse 23 says, Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye, that, all ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. You know, For he have not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither have he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows, David says, before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord, the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. Uh, All the kindreds of the nations shall worship him before thee. Thy kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among nations. God is in control, and unless we know that, we have no way of bringing glory to his name. We bring glory to his name when we praise, when we worship, and it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to know that he's there, to be able just to feel his presence when we come into this building to know that uh, we have people in here that bring glory and praise to God all the time with their lives. In Romans 15, 6, we see that uh, we bring praise to him in unity. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's fifteen six. Ye that <coughs> I'm going to read five or four even. <laughs> I hate to just pick out a, a verse. I'll start at three. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. That's us. Our our reproaches, our sins fell on our Lord Jesus Christ. But for whatsoever, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. We have that hope in our Savior and our Lord. For God, the God of patience and consolation, grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus we need to be like minded we need to agree with what he's taught us when we agree with what he's taught us we bring glory to God that you may with one mind and with one mouth glorify God even the father of our Lord Jesus that's a that's an amazing scripture I mean it just seems like it's almost impossible to bring people of God to govern one mind and one and it doesn't mean to agree on everything it means that we have to agree that we serve the Lord God and and his son Jesus Christ we have to accept that accept that that gift that he's given us 
and we become one just as, as uh, Jesus and God are one in thought. We become one in thought, and we want to serve him with one mind. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us through the glory of God. God, Jesus, he got that glory from the Father because he obeyed. He obeyed him, and, and Christ glorified, God glorified his name. Another psalm that talks about unity is back in Psalm, uh, another verse. Psalms 33, 2, 133, 2, I'm sorry. You all know that scripture. <laughs> That's a short psalm. Behold, how good, how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Zion means a mountain in Jerusalem. Uh, that blessing is, is to us all that, that believe, to us all that hear him talking to us, that precious ointment upon the head that ran down to Aaron's beard That's when they anointed him and, and consecrated him to be the high priest. We don't get consecrated with oil ointment anymore. We get consecrated with the blood of Jesus Christ. We're consecrated. We're sanctified. We're set apart, just like God set Aaron apart from other men. The high priest, he was a, he was consecrated to do God's work. So are we, through the blood of Christ. We, we're consecrated, sanctified to do the work of Jesus Christ. So unity, that brings us, uh, that brings glory, glory and honor and blessings to God. Now we're going to talk about uh, that sanctification. First Corinthians 6.20 got to go back again a little bit here just to 19 what know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God and you are not your own we've been bought with the blood of, of, of God with Jesus Christ for you are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's he was talking about uh, being one with, with God, but you go back and he was talking about the Corinthians and he said you don't become one with a harlot. We belong to God. Uh, it says flee every sin that man doeth without the body, but he that commit a fornication sin against his own body. And we don't belong to ourselves. Are we going to be connected to a harlot and, and be one with God? Can't be. It's impossible. Or any other sin that we do. We can't be have that in our life, dominate in our lives. I mean, we're not perfect by any chance. But God is helping us to become that way with his spirit. And we don't belong, we don't belong to ourselves anymore once we accept that great gift that God has given us. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 
12. One twelve, Second Thessalonians one twelve. The name of Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. How does that work, you know? What's it talking about there? We have to back up maybe a little bit. And he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Talking about Christ. This is verse 10. And to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you is believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. When we accept him as our Savior, we're glorifying God through Christ. We're glorifying Jesus. Jesus was glorified when he died on the cross. He... Uh, he took the sins of the whole world, and he died because he wanted to serve his Father. And I think we can take that to Christians today that are willing to die because they want to serve God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now we beseech you, brethren, this is 2-1, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or trouble, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. That no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there become a falling away first, and that man of sin be re revealed, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is God, or that is worship, so that he is God, sit up in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. You know, Paul knew all this stuff, but they didn't. And new believers, they don't know all this, what I just read. So we don't need to get carried away with somebody new of prophecy. We need to get them grounded in Christ first. We need to tell them about Jesus and, and how he works in our lives. And why? And that's, that's a hard study for some people. So we have to uh, know that we're sanctified, being sanctified, being used of God. Ephesians uh, 1. Twelve, one twelve. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, and whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. Paul's talking to the Ephesians and uh, the glory that, that they can have, that, uh, that, that uh, message that Paul gave them in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You know, if we believe and we're not sealed with that, the Spirit, if we're not having God in our, in, our, in our heart, if we're not doing his will, we're, we're deceived if you think we have been saved and, and you don't feel something different. You're going to feel it. You're going to know it. It says so right here. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption 
of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. You know, we don't belong to ourselves. We're, we're redeemed and until we're purchased. And we are purchased. But you've got to know that when you decide to follow Jesus Christ and to believe what he's talking about to glorify his name. We can't glorify him without knowing what he did for us and why he did it and what he expects of us. You know, it's one thing to believe. The, James says the devils believe and tremble. So we have to do a little more. We have to act on what we believe in a way that pleases God. Let's uh, let's go back and do one more. I'm going to talk to you about how we glorify God. It's with it works, and it's biblical. That's a lost word in our in a lot of churches today. Let's go back to Matthew five sixteen. Jesus tells us this. I'll go back to 15. Neither, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it give a flight to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Good works glorify our God. When he sees us through faith doing good, it brings glory to his name. Let's go to uh, John 15. There's so much in here that Jesus taught us that it's just hard to pick a verse or two because we know that how he taught us is how he wants us to live. He's our example. He's the one we should follow. He says, I am the true vine and my father is a husband. Just talking about first, first verse of John 15. Ever branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring more fruit. He's not talking about uh, growing peaches here. He's talking about growing disciples, about making followers out of whoever we meet and talk to and love. You know, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in a vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. This abide is, is it's like living with someone. It's, it's inviting him into your heart and God into your heart. They won't come if there's a lot of sin in there. They won't come if you keep doing the same things over and over that you've done all your life. I once had a a drug dealer tell me, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, I believe in Christ. But there was no fruits to prove that. There was no works to prove that. She just heard that all you got to do is believe. And we know that's not true. But a lot of people in the world don't. It says in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Our God is the one that, that prunes this branch to bring on more works, that grows this branch to become stronger. He's the one that cuts out the bad stuff and, and throws more good stuff at you. We can't do it by ourselves. If a man abide not in me, 
And this is scary here. A man abide not in Jesus as a branch. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them in the fire and they are burned. He's telling us once we're grafted on, if we don't do the works that that Spirit is leading us to, He'll cut us off. He'll cut us off and throw us in the fire. That's what happens at the end of the age. Now yeah, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 9.13. Paul is talking about making a collection for the saints here. You need to read all that to get all the, the gist of it, but I'm going to back up to six. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. For that says God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want anyone to give out of a out of a compulsion that he's got to give. He wants him to give from the heart. Every uh, fairly shall reap, and <laughs> I'll start out. But this I say: He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, for grud not grudgingly, or of a necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. Does that mean everybody's going to have all the money in the world to give? No. But there's something we can give. There's something in our lives that we can do to further the Word of God, to, to satisfy God's uh, desire that we be open to giving, that we're not selfish in anything. Whatever we have, He wants us to give. It says, uh, as it is written, He have dispersed abroad. He have given to the poor. His not righteousness remaineth forever. That's in the book of Psalms. He quoted that. Uh, God has always fed his people. There's a verse 9 that likes to quote that his people will never go hungry. That he will take care of them. There's some of his people hungry in the day's world. I know when I go to Africa that you see these people, and they're very poor. <laughs> they're not like us. Hey, they have to go to the store or to the market every day to buy something to eat. And they do. They somehow manage the people that I've been around. But sometimes they don't. They don't manage. But someone brings something to them to eat. In that case, someone from the church, whatever. God feeds them. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. The seed that's sown is, is, is fruits of righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, with, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. We give, and people thank God for it. Those that receive the blessings from the Corinthians and Jerusalem, they got thanksgiving from the people in Jerusalem. God got thanksgiving through that. So we don't need to give to make people thankful and think about what and where are we coming from. Why do we do this? Because people can't figure it out unless they begin to see something different in us if they can see that difference and know why, 
then maybe they'll trust God on their own. It says, for the administration of this service, not only supply up the one of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings of, unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection. While we're giving and helping, they glorify God because of our subjection unto his laws and rules and love. Unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and at all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He's give us a gift, but we can lose it. We can lose anything we don't use. God bless you, and, and uh, just continue to bless you with your, with your gifts. <laughs>